Good morning. Imagine that you're sitting at a dinner table with your family and closest friends. What does that feel like? Now imagine that you're sitting at that same table, but this time you're all alone. Feel any different? For me, that feeling of sitting alone at a table took over my mind for almost three years. Family has always been something that I hold close. My parents and my brothers are my biggest supporters. Growing up in such a close family taught me to believe that I was never going to be alone. My dad has always been by my side regardless of what I was doing or where I was. I can always hear his voice in my head saying, you have to be your best in order to create opportunities for yourself. That is something that I live by today and will for the rest of my life. I am not discounting my mom and my two brothers, but it's just that my dad and I are very similar in personality and socially wise. My mom has been someone that has been there for me and who knows that I have struggled throughout my life. And sometimes she didn't know when I was. My dad told me once that my mom cried when she knew that I wasn't happy at school. I never wanted my happiness to affect others. I love my mom no matter what, and she is such an important person in my life. Growing up in New York City for the first eight years of my life, I was able to go and see my friends and family wherever I went. Starting off as a young toddler, I had a smile that would light up a room. My parents would say to me that I had chubby cheeks, and when I smiled, I looked just like a bunny. That was a family joke until I was around seven years old. The city had endless possibilities of being with people at all times, regardless of whether you knew them or not. While walking near my building, I would never say hi. I would never hesitate to say hi to strangers. My parents told me that when I was five, I even made friends with a homeless man. Every time that I would walk near the bagel store, I would see him run up and engage in a five-minute conversation about whatever came out of my mouth. I was known as a kid that would hop up and down the stairs when it was pouring rain outside. I would run through the elephant sprinklers at the park nearby, fall, scrape my knee, cry for a few minutes, and then get back up and run through them again. But that all went away when I moved from New York to Minnesota in the fall of 2004. Minnesota was a place where I never envisioned that I would move to. I had never heard of it before we moved. From the beginning, I was never truly open to the idea of being the new kid at school and having to make new friends. The people were different, the food, the culture, and of course, the way I acted towards my family. I didn't have an easy transition from the old to the new. I was irritable, mean, and overall very unhappy. My friends in New York were the only friends that I had ever made. The first few years, I tried my hardest to make new friends and meet new people. It was very hard because I was in, lo in lower school, we were constantly changing friend groups and would have new friends almost every day. Being new to Minnesota, I didn't know what it was like to be a kid there. In the city, you could walk anywhere and would meet friends at any moment. In Minnesota, nothing was in walking distance. You had to drive everywhere. Lower school went by quickly. I had my group of friends and would never skip out on a trip to Libby Lou for birthday parties filled with makeovers and multicolored hair. As middle school approached, I became very nervous about yet another change. As the three years of middle school went by, I started to notice that those friends of mine were becoming distant and wouldn't ever want to hang with me. There were times where I'd find myself eating alone at lunch or sitting by the lockers waiting for my friends to come out, but they never did. I would ask them to hang out, they would say no, and then I would look and see a picture of them with other friends of mine. I felt as though they didn't care if I was friends with them and that I was the only one who cared if they were friends with me. In the fall of 2011, it became a approaching quickly and I dreaded those scary doors of high school. 
freshman year came and I knew I was the new kid all over again. My friends, the ones who I told secrets to and shared my crushes with were all distant to me. It was as though I was invisible to them. Do you know what it feels like to be invisible? No one ever wants to feel that way. When I finished freshman year, I looked back and reflected on my first year of high school. I had made it, but I realized I came home crying two to three days a week. No matter what I did to distract myself, playing three sports, inviting people over, doing what people told me to do, nothing would work at all. I still felt as though I was invisible. This wasn't healthy for me. I just thought that I was overthinking things, but I was wrong. Sophomore year came at the end of the summer. Same friends and safe behaviors towards me. I still didn't realize that I was being treated as nothing. Around the time of homecoming, a tradition at my school, I started getting looks from people and kids who I didn't know. I let it go for the first few days, and then it got to a point that the whispering was every day. I questioned myself. Did I have something on my shirt? Was there something on my face? Did I say something to someone that I shouldn't have? Anything that would help me figure out why they were looking at me. I was truly miserable. The number of days that I would come home crying increased to every day and for longer periods of time. I wasn't a happy girl that I used to be. I was never happy. I was always somber. This cycle went on for weeks and it didn't get better. Every day I tore myself apart and questioned myself about the fact that they were rude to me. I didn't see how the rudeness was hurting me because I just wanted friends. In October of 2012, I came home from a long day of school crying hysterically. My mom tried to comfort me, but all I wanted to do was go to my room, cry, and be alone. I felt that no one wanted to be my friend, and once again, I was invisible to them. I cried for hours that afternoon and tried to make myself feel better, but nothing was any help at all. This is when I reached the lowest point in my life. At this point, I knew that I couldn't keep going down the road that I was. Something needed to change. This was the time I began thinking about boarding school. I brought up the idea to my parents one night at dinner, and the next day we sat down and created a list of schools. Each school that I visited gave me hope that I could break the cycle and that I was in and can find a new place that was right for me. I needed to change my thinking and transition to a new place in my life. The answer was boarding school. Now looking back on the first years of high school, I wish that I could have listened to my parents more, especially my mom. She always told me that my so-called friends were treating me like I was a doormat. I never wanted to listen to her or hear what she had to say because I knew deep down that they were my friends. There were constant fights where I would get mad at my mom for saying things and get into arguments about who my friends truly were. It took me time, tears, loneliness, and meanness to finally realize that they weren't indeed my true friends. My so-called friends of mine didn't care about me anymore. It got to a point where I did anything that they, so they would hang out with me. My mom was right all along, but I never believed her and I should have. There is one thing that I have learned. You can't always rely on yourself to see everything that is happening around you. What you can do is listen to those who care about you most because they are the ones that know you best. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for never giving up on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Reaching the low point in my life that I did in October of 2012 didn't define who I became and will never define who I am today. The person that I was before is the same person that I am today. The person, everyone goes through a point of realization and that it doesn't have to follow me wherever I go. Going through that tough bump in my life showed me that not everything is perfect. 
and that when you get through it and become who you truly want to be, that is the best end result. My happiness is all that matters, and I have learned that if I surround myself with wonderful people and my family, then I will be the happiest that I can be. Thank you. Oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm still. I'm still speaking. <laughs> I want to share a quote by Harvey Fierstein. Never be bullied into silence. Never allow yourself to be made a victim. Accept no one's definition of your, of your life. Define yourself. With the listening to my mom and knowing that my dad had my back, gave me the confidence to break the cycle on relying others for my happiness. Their undying support gave me the confidence to take a stand and change what I wanted in my life, which is ultimately happiness. Don't let anything or anyone get in your way that might define who you are, because all that matters is that you are yourself and you are happy. Thank you.